name is Joseph O'Malley and I am a theatre director. I think it's important to say at the start that I didn't originally think I was going to be a theatre director. Uh, I started off uh, wanting to be an actor uh, and I was an actor for a while until I fell into being a theatre director and I think that's a completely valid way and that's a way a lot of people get into directing. Um, it always strikes me there's sort of two schools of directing. There's people that always wanted to do it and they might have done courses or university degrees in, in directing or subjects around directing related to that. And there's people like me that just sort of either worked in the arts as actors or stage managers or other you know, musicians and just sort of fall into it. Um, and I think both are completely valid. Um, yeah, so about me, I was a very uh, shy, little boy. <laughs> I uh, didn't like theatre at all. I was terrified. Uh, I was never picked for any of the school plays. Uh, in fact, I was once, um, but I refused to say anything. And so uh, the teacher in the end said, all I had to do was I was given something to do and I had to nod and walk off stage. Uh, but I didn't. I think I burst into tears. Um, so that was the end of that. Um, but something changed when I was about sort of 10 or 11. I finally agreed to have like a speaking part and uh, in a school play and uh, I, there were a couple of jokes involved in it and I said them and suddenly all these parents were laughing and I was like okay okay I could get used to this um, and so began me sort of being a bit of a clown both in class which I do not condone at all uh, but also whenever I could sort of in the playground or in plays and I really started to enjoy it to the point where a teacher um, spoke to my mum, uh, well they would quite often speak to my mum, but uh, <laughs> about other things, but they spoke to my mum and said look I think it would be great if Joe did some sort of uh, club, theatre club or group, I think he'd really enjoy it. The problem was uh, none of my immediate family have any involvement in the arts at all so we didn't really know even where to start until a relative of mine uh, found an advertisement in a newspaper which she cut out for a local theatre group, uh, which I began to attend and absolutely loved. Made some brilliant friends and it led on to me joining amateur groups and we did musicals and plays and I just thought it was the best thing ever. But um, I didn't really know where to go from there. I got to about 15 or 16 and wasn't really sure until a teacher, again, mentioned the National Youth Theatre, and I hadn't heard of it. Um, but we read a little leaflet about it, it sounded brilliant, so a friend and me um, applied, and we got into their summer course um, that they did in London. It was like a residential course, so we went away for a week and a half and did this amazing course, and it absolutely blew my mind. It was the first experience of, there were just 30 of us in a class every day, just devising and creating work and learning with this unbelievable practitioner. Um, theatre for me before that had been getting a part, counting how many lines I had uh, to make sure that it was a really good part because the more lines you had, the better your part. Um, and that was about it. And then trying to make as many people laugh basically as possible. Um, but this time it was completely different. We were creating work where the purpose wasn't really the outcome, it was the process of creating it and that was the whole reason for doing. It was working as a, an ensemble and devising and it completely blew my mind. So coming out of the NYT I decided right I, I'm fascinated by this um, and so a friend of mine recommended hey why don't we both audition for um, the RADA Youth Company. The R RADA is the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts. It's based in London. It's a fantastic theatre school that's very well renowned, but they ran a youth company that um, was completely free. You had to audition to get in, but it took people from all sorts of different backgrounds, different parts of the country, different lived experiences, um, and we all got together every Sunday for a year and worked essentially as young professional actors or that's what we were treated like um, we had amazing workshops um, we got given tickets to the RADA shows to watch these professional actors do their stuff um, we had amazing teachers and that to me sold acting I was like right I'm completely sold I want to go to drama school this is what I want to do so I auditioned for drama school and got into um, 
GSA, which is the Guildford School of Acting, which is a really brilliant school. And I had three great years there. Um, I think it's worth at this point saying that drama school isn't for everyone. It was an uh, amazing, enlightening, thrilling experience, but it was also very intense. It is intense. Um, and, you know, it, it's absolutely fair to say that some people don't get on with it. And it's not the only way into the industry as well. That's the important thing to remember. But I really enjoyed it. I love the fact that I could go from an animal studies class to uh, ancient Greek theater to a singing class and then finish the day with some ballet. That to me just blew my mind. So after that, I spent eight years working as an actor, you know, worked with some great companies, some great people, uh, have some amazing memories of that time. I also worked with some great directors. Um, really fantastic directors who I remain friends with to this day. Um, I also worked as you do with directors that I didn't connect with so much. Um, and during these rehearsal periods, I would often sit and think like, why? what is it about this director that I find so brilliant to work with that's unlocking, you know, the potential in me? And sometimes, you know, how come I don't quite connect with this director? And I would think about that quite a lot until it got to one period, um, long period, pretty much out of work, or as, as we like to call it um, in the industry, fun employment, um, when I thought, you know what, I've thought about this long enough. Maybe I should give it a go. Maybe I should try directing. It's something I've always thought about. Um, maybe I should try it. The only problem with that was I had absolutely no idea how to be a director. I, I understood how the acting industry worked. I completely got that. You know, I've been doing it for a while, but I had no idea how the sort of directing world worked. You know, do, how did I do it? Did I have to get an agent? Did I have to, uh, you know, how did I apply for jobs? There's no auditioning. You know, no one auditions you to be a director. Um, I sometimes wish they would, but they don't. Um, so I called a few friends and I was like, look, I want to do this, but I have no idea how to do it. And they were really helpful. They pointed me in the direction of things like um, Facebook groups for creatives, um, fringe theatre companies based in London that often did work that would require people to either help or assist. And so I started writing lots of emails and getting in touch with lots of different companies. Uh, and I got my first uh, little assisting job on a, a fringe piece in Waterloo. Um, and it was a really eye-opening experience. I'd never been that side of the room before. I'd never been sat on a chair looking at people perform. I'd always been the one performing. And it took a lot of getting used to to not want to just get up and join in, basically. Um, but in a way, that was really freeing because having come from an acting background, I knew to a certain extent how the actors were feeling up on stage. I, I knew, had a good idea of how they were approaching their character or how they were approaching the scene. And so it allowed me to connect with them quite quickly when it came to talking about character or, or certain part of scene work, um, which I found really, really helpful. So that we did that and I, I got a couple of other um, assisting gigs and then uh, I found out that a regional theatre out in the West Country was looking for an assistant director. Um, they just opened and uh, yeah, I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll take the plunge. Um, it was paid, I know, right, paid assisting work, which was really exciting to me at the time. And uh, I went there, I had a meeting with them, um, we talked a bit about ideas for the play and, uh, and yeah, and I got the job. It was an incredibly uh, ambitious show. It was a brand new theatre, so we were all sort of working together as a group. A lot of us, you know, hadn't, well, we'd all done it before, but because it was such a new organisation, we were all sort of learning as we went. And I'm really thankful for that now, that we all became this quite tight-knit group and learned our craft in that theatre, essentially, as we went along. Um, so it was a really, really rewarding experience. Once that show was over, it was coming to the end of the run actually, and I thought, you know what, it's a bit cheeky, but it's been playing on my mind for a little bit. I'm gonna mention it. So uh, as I was walking down the corridor, I passed the artistic director and I said, 
Look, uh, it's something I've been thinking about. I've noticed that you don't have any comedy in your opening season. It was a great season, but it was quite serious. And I thought, you know what? Why don't, you know, if you've got any space, I'd really recommend putting some comedy in. And, you know, hey, I really like comedy. I've acted in a lot of comedy. I love directing comedy. Maybe we could make something work. And anyway, they were very polite to me, um, you know, and the conversation sort of fizzled out. It was fine. Um, but didn't really go anywhere and I thought okay well at least I tried and you know little was I to know that in this industry that's by far the most important thing always giving it a go always trying to connect with people and anyway a few months later I got a phone call from the same theatre saying look a space has um, turned up um, we've shuffled around the season a little bit and if you can find a comedy show that fits what we're looking for, um, that will fit this gap in our scheduling, then it's yours to direct. Having that level of responsibility was something that I just wasn't used to at all. Like, as an actor, you are mainly in charge of your own sort of process and what you're doing um, in the scene. Obviously you have to be generous to other people in the scene and in the show, but really you're, you're, you tend to be quite inwardly focused. And even as an assistant director, you work, you tend to work on isolated, little moments or with certain actors on certain parts and suddenly once we got into the rehearsal room for this show I was in charge of the whole sort of vision of the show as it were um, and you have actors coming to you asking you questions that you know spoiler alert you sometimes don't know the answer to um, and that to me was both brilliant but also uh, utterly terrifying completely terrifying um, and I look back on that first show and I was like, I, I was completely like a deer in the headlights, you know, learning all those lessons for the first time of how you work with producers, how you work with a stage management, how you work with actors. Um, but it was, you know, it was an incredibly rewarding experience. And I'll never forget the day the show opened, seeing the actors on stage, the brilliant stage management team, the brilliant creative team, lighting, sound, and everything come together that a few months before had just sort of been in your head. Um, that's an experience I'll never forget. You know, and I try and take that energy and remember how I felt on that very first show. Take that into every project I do from now into the future. Um, it's an incredibly rewarding career. It's an exciting career, it's a challenging career, but it's one that I wouldn't change. I would say straight off the obvious ones are curiosity and imagination. Be curious, be curious about the world around you, be curious about people importantly, you know, how do people work? Uh, how, how do they tick? How can you tell their stories effectively, dramatically and in an exciting way? Right, the very first steps, I would say, uh, it's an obvious one, but it's an important one. Watch lots of theatre. Um, try and get out there anywhere you can to watch theatre. Enjoy it. Watch stuff you enjoy, watch stuff you don't enjoy. You know, go to your local theatre, go to the big theatres, the big names in London, because a lot of them have fantastic ticket deals for young people. There's sometimes free tickets, sometimes very cheap tickets. Go and watch theatre. Um, also online. There's a huge amount of resources online that you can watch for free. There's some stuff that you might have to pay for. But the important thing is, is to watch it and have an opinion because you never know when you're going to be in the room with someone important and they'll ask you a question about a show or a genre of theatre or a playwright or even an actor or something like that. And if you look back at them blankly, it just shuts you off from the conversation. Well, the good news is you don't need any formal qualifications. Like, to be honest, anyone can, you can direct a show right now. You get together a group of talented friends, find a really good play, find a space, put it on. Fantastic. Um, if you want to have some slightly more formal training, then there are drama schools um, with directing courses that you can look at. There are also universities um, that do courses in directing. The important thing to remember about those courses, 
Quite often some of them are postgraduate courses, which means you'll already need a degree before you do it. Um, they tend to be one year courses, um, but also they can be very expensive as well. A lot of them will have uh, funding that, that may help you pay costs, but it's important to remember that, uh, you know, that can be a barrier because these courses can be very expensive. Okay, well, um, before I start, the important thing to know is that theatre directing is not a profession to get into if you want to earn a lot of money very quickly uh, and retire early, basically. Um, a Guardian article that was published in 2015 uh, said that a survey had found that most theatre directors in the country, or well over half, were earning around £5,000 a year from theatre directing. So, um, work experience and volunteering, there are opportunities out there. There's not enough, uh, in my opinion, but there are opportunities out there. Um, it's notoriously hard to get into the rehearsal room of, uh, you know, a, a established director unless you're being employed as an assistant to work alongside. Um, believe me, there are some big theatre directors that I would absolutely love to do work experience for just to sit in the room and uh, absorb the work. But for one reason or another, it's not really something that is set up in our industry as well as other industries. Um, there are some big organisations uh, like the National Theatre and plenty of regional theatres around the country that are doing fantastic work in outreach and work experience. So my advice would be look towards the theatres you love, look towards your local theatres, go on their websites, give them a ring and find out whether they do any work experience because I'm sure there are opportunities out there. So I think the important thing to remember about being a freelance theatre director is it isn't a short-term career, really. You know, if, if you want to uh, become a director, sort of suddenly become very famous and, and world-renowned, make a huge amount of money and then retire by the time you're 30, it's probably not going to happen. You know, I really hope it does happen for you, I really do, but it probably won't happen. Um, but the good news is really the longer you go on as a director, the more amazing people you meet, the more amazing opportunities you will get, the more you'll learn and the more you'll grow in your profession. And uh, really that's an incredibly valuable thing. Now, uh, theatre directing can lead to all sorts really. Um, you know, you can, a lot of people might decide to go and direct in a different medium. So you can direct in audio or you can direct for television or film. It's worth saying that they are very different mediums. So, you know, it's not like you can just be like, oh, I, I've directed a few plays, so I'm gonna go and direct a uh, yeah, Steven Spielberg film. It's a little bit different, but if you want to like pivot into another medium, there's absolutely the opportunity to do that. Being a, a freelance theatre director obviously gives you a huge amount of freedom. Um, you're not working in office, you're not working a nine to five, you've got no boss saying you're not allowed to leave the office until you've done, you know, this amount of work or, you know, until this time. Um, so that's, in a way, fantastic. Um, there's a flip side to that though as well, which means you have to have a lot of self-discipline yourself. Uh, you have to be your own boss. You have to set your own targets, um, your own timings, um, your own project schedules, all of that. Um, and that can be quite difficult as well, uh, quite difficult to get used to. I think the most important thing to remember is don't sit around waiting for someone to offer you an opportunity. If you're good, if you work hard, if you're a nice person, people will notice and you'll succeed.